Barnabies. God, we're getting good at this now. <laughs> oh, hello, it's us. <laughs> it's me again. Yes. Um, we have decided that we are going to do something a little special today. Ouch, you're on my hair. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. Oh gosh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, so because of the holidays? Um, well, everybody's been doing these tag um, question, question and answer tag things. So I thought it would be kind of cool if Tia and I did one, right? But it's, it's not going to be like a Christmas theme or anything like that. It's kind of a get to know you, whatever. God knows. I don't know what we're going to end up saying. <laughs> so we've got, I found a thing on, um, you on online that is 300 questions, 300 random questions. So Tia's got an app on her phone that she just shakes her phone and it picks a number. So we're just going to have it pick a number and then we're going to answer the questions. So let's see. God, I look white as a ghost. Holy. <laughs> wow. Okay. So anyway, here we go. Okay. <laughs> What is under your bed? <laughs> I can answer that. Um, oh, wow. Well, okay. I know what's under my bed. <laughs> Mine's actually just gross. So, <laughs> under my bed is just a bunch of my hair and <laughs> dust bunnies. And occasionally, I will find my dog's um, rubber balls. <laughs> so, that's under my bed. Okay. <laughs> oh. I should really clean, but you think? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I need like a like a rug or something under there, like a nice yeah, Swiffer or something. I should have got her a Swiffer for Christmas. I have one. Oh. <laughs> she doesn't use it. Okay. <laughs> Alrighty then. What's under my bed? My I have a um. Oh, I forget what it's called, but anyways. It's for your back and it's just a big square electronic box thing and you put your butt on it and like and you're laying down you put your butt on it and it will swivel and it's supposed to be like an electronic chiropractor thing. <clears throat> um, it works to a point. I'm really white. <laughs> we may have to turn the color down on that camera. <laughs> I look like I'm like ghostly. Um, I'm sure you're fine. Uh huh. So, <laughs> anyways, yeah. So that's what's under my bed, and it's like a four hundred dollar thing that I don't even use anymore. So, <sighs> what artistic endeavors have you tried and decided you were bad at? Oh wow. What does that mean exactly? Like it means like what like artsy kind of thing have you done that you just sucked at <laughs> I don't really dabble in that though yeah she's not she doesn't um she doesn't do crafts or anything like that I so. like coloring books <laughs> but it's like a weird phase like once a month I'm like I don't want to color <laughs> <laughs> um me being a crafter uh I've done <clears throat> lots of different things um i find that working with themo i suck at it that? it's like the stuff that you can make little femo animals out of or you can cover things like my crochet hook the handles made out of femo oh <clears throat> like sculpty kind oh. of stuff yeah um i've tried doing pottery a little bit uh i would love to try that it will the traditional kind of pottery I haven't done yet, but I have used pottery clay to make like little animals and stuff like that. That I enjoyed. Uh, that was kind of calming. <clears throat> but there isn't really anything that I haven't tried that I really suck at. Um, I pick up things pretty quickly. There's lots of things that I've tried that I really don't enjoy. But Can I say what I don't like that you do? Or have done? Okay. You know like those little dolls that you made? 
Oh, the power text dolls? Yeah. Really? I don't like them. Really? Yeah, they kind of freak me out. <laughs> uh, okay then. <laughs> Other than that, you are very good at whatever else you do. Ah. Considering I'm a power text instructor, that's not <laughs> good. <laughs> Is it just because they freak you out or is yeah. it because they look awful? Because they freak me out. Okay. <laughs> I want to specify that. <laughs> How many rings before you answer the phone? <laughs> I just let it go to voicemail or I hang up. <laughs> I, unless it's like my friends or family, then I'll answer it like two rings. Yeah. But yeah. <clears throat> Depends on where I am in the house. <laughs> suckers going to voicemail <laughs> and right now um yeah being on the scooter i i can't get to my phone <laughs> oh my um, god like her ipad i would try and facetime her and she was like oh i could hear it ringing but i couldn't get to it because it was in the other room and i was like i wanted yeah. to talk to you but that's okay <laughs> well it was charging <laughs> And you weren't, you couldn't get to it. Yeah, well, no, I, yeah, because I can't, I couldn't get into that room because my, there was too much stuff and my scooter wouldn't fit. And I'd never find my way out. <laughs> what is the last compliment you got? <laughs> That's open from each other. <laughs> yeah. Um. Wow. What is the last compliment I got? I would have to say... It was from my subscribers, I guess. Maybe? My subscribers are always complimenting me and <clears throat> commenting on uh, um, me. Well, yeah, like, yeah, I, I would have to say, I don't, I can't pinpoint one, um, but, you know, it's like I have a lot of subscribers say how nice I am and how... They really care about me and how beautiful your eyes are. Yeah, my eyes. <laughs> I always get complimented on my eyes. I look like crap right now, and they still compliment <laughs> me. Eyes. <laughs> um. So yeah, I have two. They're kind of weird. So like, I would take a photo of the food that I made here, and then a guy would be like, "Oh, that looks so good," and I'm like, "Yeah, thanks." <laughs> But like one about me specifically was a guy that I used to hang out with and he had said that, you know, from being 16 till now, I still look good, apparently. That was the last compliment you've ever gotten? Yeah, it was there a couple days ago. Other than between us, but like that's... <laughs> well, you have had subscribers compliment you too in the last yeah, couple the... of days. <laughs> yes, but that's like yeah, outside of this. Yeah. Um, oh, I know. One compliment she did get was about her cooking from us. <laughs> you know, so there's that. <laughs> yeah. Do you prefer that people shoot straight with you or temper their words and why? That's a hard... <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> The door just started opening on its own and it was <laughs> like, what the hell? Cat's face. <laughs> then you just see Bella go, hello. <laughs> she just walks off like, okay, Bella, you guys are busy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was freaky. <laughs> um, what does it mean by temper their words? It means tone them down, kind of make them a little softer. <laughs> like, okay. don't sit there and say, you know, you're a bitch. <laughs> or, you know, they'd say, you know, you might want to, you know, chill a bit. <laughs> okay, so I, mean? I have an answer, but it's very detailed. Okay. So, I would rather someone be straightforward with me, but I get irritated so deep in my core when I already know what I have to do or, like, what the answer is, and then someone goes and repeats it to me, and I'm like, yeah, just stop the talking to me. The truth hurts. Like, I, like, when I already know it, and then someone else will come in and tell me, I'm just like, stop. I don't want to talk to you, because I already know. I get it all the time. 
all the time. Yeah. The core of our fights are because I tell her, you know, this is what you need to do, or this is I this think this is what you should do or whatever and she's just basically tells me to f off and leave her alone and I'm a bad mother and go away yeah that's a that's a yeah <laughs> but at least I can admit to it like yeah I don't know yeah like I, I would much rather people just be straight up with me and not hold things back yeah but when I already know I know and I don't need someone to tell me again um hi Bella <laughs> I, on the other hand, um, I find that a lot of people, when they shoot straight, they're mean about it. Yeah. Um, they don't know how to say something without hurting you, hurting their feeling, the person's feelings, or they just don't give a shit how they say it. You know, it's like, this is how it is, and you can either take it or leave it. You know, <clears throat> I would much rather say to me, have someone say to me, you know, um, I really don't appreciate how you said that to me. There's definitely a way that someone can. Oh, get interpretation the point. is everything. Yeah. You know, it's like, yeah, you can get the point across without being a douche about it. Yeah. You know, like. Oh, did I really say that? <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> um, but yet, when it comes to me and George, um, I am I shoot straight from the hip with him. And he hates hearing it. And I can be harsh. I can be really harsh. Um, and he hates hearing it, but he goes away and he thinks about it. And then he says, you know what? Yeah, you were right. I just don't want to hear it. You know, or I, I didn't like the way you said it or whatever. <clears throat> so for me to turn around and say, I would rather somebody <clears throat> sugarcoat it just a little bit. Um, but then for me to actually be the one to be like, Bleh! you know, uh, it, it's weird. <laughs> it's really weird. And I never used to be like that. <clears throat> and the funny thing is, is before Scott passed away, um, I was a totally different person. A totally different person. Um... I am a lot harsher now than I was back then. So uh, there's a lot to be said for grief and how you become very angry and sometimes you get stuck in that anger. Um, it's taken me a long time to not be just like rawr, rawr, all the time, <clears throat> all the time. <clears throat> so yeah. So I guess that's the answer. That. <laughs> we have a pussy cat now. Go away. Hella. Come here. Okay, next. Is there any item you collect? <laughs> yarn. <laughs> yarn, yarn, and more yarn. Uh oh. Kitty cat. You can see your tail. Oh, uh oh no. Bella. No. Do not jump. <laughs> don't jump up on the camera. You gotta go to the bathroom, don't you? Yes, you do. Hold that thought. <laughs> I guess my answer would just be that, like, I don't have a passion for certain things. Like, I, I don't collect. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. She doesn't, she's never been like that, really. Like, when she was a kid, too, she never collected, like... I had Bratz dolls. But I don't think that was, like, an obsession. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no. I collect, I also collect now Furl's hooks. <laughs> so there's that <clears throat> unless you want to count the amount of vehicles that I've had but I don't keep them yes <laughs> oh my god she's only been driving for a few years and she's had more vehicles in that short period of time than I have had in my whole freaking life <laughs> I just she just swaps them out every year you know it's like <laughs> who is the first person you call when something horrible happens for me, it depends. Depends on like how horrible that it is. Because if it's tolerable, I don't tell anyone and I just deal with it myself. Mm -hmm. But it's literally between you and dad. Well, when she, she just got rear-ended not too long ago. First person she called was me. And I'm the furthest person away. <laughs> the problem is though, is that I know that you can relate to me in some things. Yeah. 
you can provide better advice than my dad can. So in that certain situation, I thought, you know, my mom's been in accidents before. I don't think my dad has. Yeah. So my first reaction was to call you. Yeah. Whereas my dad would just be like, well, just get in your car and go to ICBC. Make sure you got all the information. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, the guy's driving away. Ugh. Anyway. Um... <clears throat> When something in the family, horrible in the family happens, um, the first person, well, I mean, George is the first person I call regardless. Um, so, but if something in the family happens, my sister is my first call. Uh, because the only person I have left in my family is my sister and my girls. So, yeah. So it's first call is George, second call is my sister. Third calls me. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't understand this question, so. Would you ever consider living abroad? Meaning overseas, different country. Yeah. Like within Canada? No, no, no. We're, we're talking other side of the world. Oh. <clears throat> no. Not for a long period of time. I think for me... I would want to be close to my family at all times. Yeah. If it were like for a couple of months for like work or something like that, I'd do that. Yeah. But I couldn't do it long term. Yeah, I I couldn't do it. Um <clears throat> Yeah, I'm I'm not I'm a homebody. I like I love being Canadian and uh and I don't think I would ever really I would never live outside of Canada. Um So what was the name of your first pet? <laughs> Rocky. Rocky was a cat that my friend dumped on me thinking, um, because I, I think I was sick or something, or it was Christmas, and there was a cat that she had come across. It was a tabby, and uh, <clears throat> she brought it, this tiny little kitten. The cat hated me from day one peed on my leather jacket, uh, terrorized me, hated my guts. I hated its little bastard guts too. <laughs> I was just like, I wanted to kill it. I was just like, you are the worst animal in the face of the planet. But it became my dad's best friend, right? Because I still lived with my dad. <clears throat> and Rocky was my dad's everything. Well, I was my dad's everything, but my cat, the cat was the second everything. Um, Rocky was just mean spirited. Uh, and dad, he scratched dad all the time and dad would just uh, laugh it off and start playing with him again. Right. And when you've got an older guy who's got paper thin skin and the cat's ripping your dad apart, it's like, you just want to, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> but my dad loved it and spoiled the crap out of Rocky. Like that cat had a whole cupboard to itself with every kind of food imaginable. And it never went hungry. It never, like dad was, oh, dad was obsessive over this cat. He had a three by three by three foot picture of Rocky on the wall uh, <laughs> it's like he had pictures, big pictures of me and my sister and the girls, but the right dead center in the middle of the wall in his apartment was this big ass cat. <laughs> and then when my dad passed away, he said he wanted to be buried with his cat. Like he wanted his ashes spread with his cat. So guess who got that? Me. <laughs> so in my white bureau in the living room is my dad and this goddamn cat <laughs> and I have to spread the both of them somewhere <laughs> and uh yeah so yeah my dad that was in his will I want to be spread with my cat it's cute though oh yeah sure <laughs> the bad thing is is like I had to put the cat down because the cat ended up getting liver 
disease and all that kind of stuff. And I had to stick the cat with a needle like that big with a fluid bag right in the back of its neck. Dad and I had to hold up the skin and stick it in. It was the grossest thing I ever had to do. And then we had to fill, like, have the whole um, IV bag go into the cat to keep the liver going. And that cat must have hated me even more. Having to stick it with a needle and then the last face it sees before it goes to sleep is me. <laughs> I'm surprised it's not haunting me. I really am surprised. Like, that cat hated my guts. And then I was the one, Dad made me take the cat to the vet. Nice. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> well, ironically, my story is almost the same as yours. <laughs> I don't know where these cats came from, but I think it was from you and your friends or something like that. <laughs> um, but I grew up having two cats, um, Katie and Amber, and Katie had passed away when I was pretty young. Mm -hmm. um, I think maybe sixth grade. And then Amber... She's also angry. And oh. Yeah. So. Red tabby. <laughs> which I found out there's not a whole lot of female um, orange tabbies. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. Uh, they're mostly male, I think. Oh, wow. So. Oh, that cat had an attitude. Oh, yeah. She would scratch every person. <laughs> she was just mean. Oh, yeah. But, like you said, you know, like, that was dad's best friend. Yeah. So. I never really took it on as those were my pets, those were his pets, but I grew up with them. And then yeah. she also had um, kidney failure, so mm -hmm. she had stage four, so I actually took her to the vet and I told dad, like, she's got to get put down, like, it's been too long. And that broke his heart, so about a month later, my dog, Diesel, he was born, and um, a couple months after that I took him home and that's my dog. I'll insert a picture here. <laughs> so yeah, that's my dog, Diesel. My grand puppy. <laughs> but yeah. you know, and that's the funny thing, I'm terrified of big dogs, especially pit bulls, but Diesel kind of took my heart. <laughs> yeah, he'll do that. <laughs> yeah, he just, as soon as he fell asleep on my chest that one day, just, that was it. <laughs> that was it. Now he headbutts me. Mm. And he's got a foot fetish. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, hence, hence why he's not here with her right now. Oh, he's, yeah. He's back at home because, yeah, he'd be jumping all over me and trying to rub my foot. And I just, mm -mm, cause this puppy, <laughs> this puppy ain't going to work. <laughs> and it's so funny too. Cause you know, like that cat was everything to my dad besides me. Yeah. And, uh, I had a fear that getting a dog would kind of confuse things for him. Because it was so sudden after. And surprisingly, that's his boy. Oh, yeah. That is his boy. Yeah. What do you do for a living? <laughs> Seeing as I'm the one that actually has the job. Yeah. I'll go first. Um, technically, I am a heavy equipment operator, but I'm not employed at the moment. Um, but previous to that, I was a dispatcher. So I was in an office for about two years before so yeah um i am medically retired <clears throat> uh so that sucks <laughs> um but what did you do before but what i did before was i was a flagger in the construction industry uh, i was the girl with the stop slow sign that everybody hates yes <laughs> i did that for 10 years and i ended up hurting my back and getting back surgery, so I was medically retired. Okay, so this one I'm gonna need help with. If you could eliminate one weakness or limitation in your life, what would it be? Oh. A weakness or a limitation. <clears throat> oh my God, mine's so personal though. Um, I don't think I'm gonna mention that. <laughs> yeah. But it's, that's not a weakness or a limitation. It kind of is for me, though. But it doesn't physically limit you to a point. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> um, I, I would have to say for me, it would be 
my back pain. Um, if I didn't have my back pain, I would be able to work. Um, I would have been able to take the course that Tia took and we, we could have gone um, up north and we could have conquered the world. <laughs> yeah, we could have dominated um, in the construction and in the mining industry. Like, I would have been doing rock truck or whatever, and you know, we could be making hand over fist money, and we would have been together. And uh, and then I just come home every week or two weeks or whatever, and and uh, bring money home to George. <laughs> so I think that's my physical limitations um, if I could if I could get rid of my pain uh, and be able to actually live like a human being again uh, that's what I would do I don't know I mean for me it's just I have a lot of anxiety and sometimes mm. that'll stop me from doing certain things but yeah I don't know I think it's definitely the chronic illness that I have that can stop me from doing certain things just because I feel like it stops mm -hmm. a lot yeah but that's about it no it's anything not really okay <laughs> okay she, it's a very touchy subject with my daughter so we'll just because chances are if I talk about it I'm gonna cry <laughs> yeah yeah <clears throat> But I know that there's probably a lot of you out there that have the same thing. But, uh, yeah. Are you an early adapter or a late adapter? Adapter to what? I'm assuming it's generalized. Like everything. I think I adapt pretty quickly. Yeah. Um. Oh, that's a hard one for me. Do I adapt? I I would probably say a late adapter um, takes me a little bit of time to get used to the ideas of things. Uh, I don't really like change too much. Um, although when I was in construction, we changed every day. Every day was different, and I loved it, that about it. But in life, um, like my foot surgery. I have to adapt to that and I'm getting frustrated so I think it depends on the situation um, what was your first ever cell phone oh my god it's sad that I don't remember but I know it was a flip phone yeah mine too was it a razor that I had oh god <laughs> like a little yeah little razor or oh something? my god yeah um, <laughs> yeah I think mine was a flip phone too Yikes. Okay, I think you gave me yours, and that's why. Probably. I think she gave me one of hers, and then I ended up getting, like, a couple Blackberries, and then it was iPhone. iPhone ever since. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, <clears throat> I, you know what? It's weird. I come late to the party on all electronic things. I didn't ever have a computer until I married your dad. Well, that's because he's a computer. He wasn't before set. that, though. <laughs> Like he, we ne I never owned a computer. I never worked on a computer. Um, See, and so, I mean, I was in my late twenties before I even touched a computer. So, but how old were you when computers were actually a thing? It was, Cause I thought that they were just coming into like the popularity when I was born. <clears throat> there were computers around in the eighties. Okay. This is how much I don't know. <laughs> Wasn't it? Was it the late eighties? I don't even remember because <laughs> I was never into it <laughs> so um, yeah so my my phone was probably because I mean they used to have the brick phone that you know I never had something like that it's like a military phone yeah <laughs> like I never had anything like that right so that was just not a thing for me um, <clears throat> what is your favorite color oh that's easy Yours is black. Whoa. <laughs> I got two, okay? It's black, black and red. Black and red, absolutely. <laughs> yes. Um, mine is, uh, well, it changes all the time. 
but for the most part I would have to say teal is my ultimate favorite um, and then a dark deep burgundy bur burgundy <laughs> burgundy what like you... deep wine colors and stuff like that what, what's the name of the stone that your wedding rings have always been oh that's amethyst is it like that no that's purple no like isn't that your favorite color no in a stone yes oh yeah. she's so bougie <laughs> she needs to have a certain stone <laughs> F the diamonds, give me this stone. Well, <laughs> actually, the ring that we picked had a big ass diamond in it, and I made them take it out and put in the sapphire. Greedy. <laughs> Sapphire's way cheaper. Way cheaper. <laughs> yeah, it would probably cost you a handful to take, have them take it out. No, and actually, it. no. No, they, uh, it was, it was fine. Oh, <laughs> but George was like, you what? <laughs> what woman takes out a diamond and puts in a sapphire? Jeez. Me. <laughs> oh, God. Are you a fan of any sports teams? No. <laughs> yes. I don't even watch sports. <laughs> I have, like, no desire mm -hmm. to watch wrestling, MMA, UFC, or, like, hockey, football, soccer. I don't care about any of them. I really don't. That's because her dad doesn't. Her dad hates sports. I'm addicted to my cell phone. Why? Because my dad's addicted to his computer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, he, he doesn't like any sports. Which was really nice at the time. I did dabble mm -hmm. in watching hockey when I was in middle school. Because I felt like I needed to be a part of the conversation at school. Mm -hmm. Other than that, I just... I'll take a peek at it whenever it's on TV, but I don't care to watch it every week <laughs> or, you know, just, yeah, I don't really care. Um, I am a Giants fan. Uh, but the weird thing is, is I don't watch football all year until the playoffs. Um, and even then I'm crocheting while I'm watching it. Uh, George is a football fanatic. Uh, he watches it all year like he'll watch games over and over again right like he used to be a football a football coach um so football is a part of my life so <clears throat> but um the giants is my my team um i have no idea why that kind of started off because scott my my late husband he used to love watching football as well uh, but he would go to the bar and watch it. And so the Giants just kind of became a thing for me. I don't know. The big joke was when we did the football pool, um, I was he was like, do you want to do the football pool? And I was like, I don't know how. I don't, I don't know. So I would watch the videos <clears throat> and the highlights and everything. And if I liked the color of their jerseys, I picked them. I won $300. <laughs> So everybody was really mad at me and they thought that I cheated and he said no really she she actually picked the colors of the jerseys that she liked <laughs> and so that was that was a big joke um but giants is giants is my thing so when georgia's patriots play my giants you know then it's like you know but <laughs> But I don't, like, I don't sit there and watch it with him, right, until it's the playoffs. And if my team makes it, it's go Giants. <laughs> I'm sitting there with my crochet hook, you know, but, uh, yeah, so I'm not a huge sports fan, but because George watches it, I kind of have, I have been sucked into it. <laughs> I'm going to pick one because I want to leave this on a, a, a good note, I guess. Okay. Um, what are your best characteristics? That's a good note. Yay. Well, I feel like we should talk about something that we like about ourselves. Oh, boy. <clears throat> okay, you first. <laughs> I like that I can adapt quickly when I don't know something. Um, and... 
the fact that I can relate to people even though I don't know their story or who they are. Mm -hmm. I can put myself into their shoes and feel how they could feel. Yeah. So yeah. Those are two things I like about myself. Um. Oh. I think mine is the fact that I'm a white lighter and that um, most people, even in YouTube land, it's the weirdest thing. People feel like they can talk to me. Um, I get people from all walks of life that will come up to me and just start talking to me and telling me their life story and then they start getting deep into things that are bothering them, things that are happening to them, and then wanting advice. Um, and that's, that's just who I am. Um, and that's the white lighter in me that makes people feel comfortable enough to talk to me. And then I do. I give them advice, whatever advice I can. Uh, every once in a while I'll do a pendulum reading for them um, <clears throat> you know every once in a while I'll hear somebody say something and then I'll be like oh hey did you ever think of this and they'd be like oh I didn't even think of that and then I get a call later or I see them again and they'd be like thank you so much you've helped me tremendously uh, so I think as much as I push the white lighter in me away sometimes, it keeps coming back and kicking me and saying, hey, you need to be doing this. So I have a lot of YouTubers that email me or um, send me messages and say, hey, you know, I saw your video and this happened to me. Blah, 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 blah. And this is, this is who I am. Or this is, you know, what I'm going through. And um, and then we talk about it, right? Or uh, I, I've, had, I've got a lot of good friends now from YouTube because of the things that we can relate to and talk about. So I think that would be the one thing about me that I would not change um, is that I can... Hope others. Yeah, I can I can get deep into their psyche, and uh, and and help them out, right? Whether it's just something on a daily basis, or something that they've been going through for a long time. And sometimes it just takes somebody from the outside to say something that will trigger them and go, "Oh, that makes all the sense in the world." Why didn't I think of that? You know, and it can make all the difference to them. So, yeah. I think it's kind of cool, though, because, like, we have something in common, I think, mm. where we have such a big heart and so much love that we don't know what to do with it. Yeah. Yeah, it's... And that's where YouTube has been great. Because <laughs> I can just go, Here! <laughs> <laughs> and, uh... And it's taken well. You know, it's very well received. So thank you for that. Um, you guys have been a blessing to me. And uh, it, it's wonderful that you've accepted me and George and my daughter Tia and uh, opened yourselves to us and are part of our Yarny family. You know, um, and I really hope that it continues and I hope that the COPA thing doesn't ruin it for everybody because it's really important that we do connect and we do put ourselves out there and uh, and get back get something back there's a lot of us that are shut-ins there's a lot of us that can't go out and don't have friends and for someone on YouTube to just go hi I see you you're important. That is tremendous. So that's why I'm here, you know. And my channel hasn't always been about just yarn 
and crochet. It's been about life stuff and about family. Family. Yeah, family. <laughs> family. So, um, so I'm going to continue to do that. And hopefully she'll come along for the ride. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks for watching. I know this is probably a long one. <clears throat> it was a lot of fun. Um, and I'm sure that we'll do it again sometime. But until then, we will say au revoir. Mm. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>